Ladies and gentlemen, from the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace and Justice, Deacon Gerald Celenti. Hello everyone, this is Deacon Gerald Celenti of the Universal Church of Freedom, Peace and Justice. And as we keep saying week after week, freedom, peace and justice uh, is stolen from us by politicians running a country near you. So one of the big events going on, very sadly, is the Israel war. Seven months of their attack into Gaza under the name that we're going to get Hamas. So now there's been talks for a ceasefire. So on Friday, the headline from the Times of Israel Hamas indicates it may agree to deal. But Israel official insists truce won't end the war. Then why would they agree to a ceasefire? They agreed to a ceasefire back in November. They returned hostages. And what did Israel do? They ramped up the destruction of Gaza. And they've only killed now the numbers around 40,000 Palestinians. Oh, but don't forget, Hamas killed about 1,100 uh, Israelis when they attacked on October 7, 2023. But you go to Haaretz, the Israeli newspaper, and they have the facts there that a lot of these people that would kill the Israelis killed them. That's right. They have the shots of the helicopters shooting at the people that Hamas was taking. They, they didn't know who they who was what. Of the tank, Israeli tank blowing up the kibbutz. But anyway, so now let's see. Let's say, and oh, and a number of those people, by the way, were military people that were killed in this by Hamas. So you had about, well, let's say 500, let's say 1,000. Israelis were killed, and now over 40,000, around 40,000 Palestinians, some 80,000 seriously wounded. Oh, I forgot Israel has the right to defend itself. How dare I? So um, negotiations for a potential ceasefire and truce in Gaza appear to reach critical moment Saturday, which Hamas set to offer its response to the latest proposal, an Israeli uh, indicating an offensive in the city of Rafah could be in, imminent if no agreement is reached. Well, Netanyahu said agreement to no agreement, they're going to attack Rafah. We have about a million people that have been displaced, living in hell. This is from Haaretz, the Israeli newspaper. Report, Hamas accepts ceasefire deal. Israel officials reject prospect of war ending. The report added that Hamas was guaranteed by the United States for a ceasefire and full Israeli withdrawal from the Gaza Strip in the third phase, but Israel's saying no. So who's lying here, the United States or Israel? Because on Sunday, Netanyahu said, Israel is prepared to pause the Gaza war in exchange for a deal to release the hostages. This is from the Times of Israel, but is not willing to end it. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu said during a weekly government meeting on Sunday. Netanyahu said he has no intention of relenting on the issue of a permanent ceasefire until Hamas is destroyed. Until Hamas is destroyed. Let's get this straight. Am I six years old 
Are you dumb enough to believe we're going to blow the place apart, knock down all those hospitals, destroy all the universities, wipe out all those people's homes, blow up the churches, the mosques, we don't care. Hamas is hiding in them. That's why we're doing it. Yeah, how about Dresden? How about Nagasaki? How about Hiroshima? How about Gaza? Who could swallow the baloney spewing out of this murderer mouth of a Netanyahu that they're destroying the whole place to get Hamas? No, no, let's go back to Jared Kushner, Donald Trump's son-in-law, who said this is very valuable waterfront property, and he wants to get the Palestinians out of there and put them in the Negev Desert so they could develop the land. Now, I'm not making that up. That's a fact. And he goes on to say that cannot happen until the IDF executes a military operation in Rafah. Oh, the word executes in the times of Israel? You mean executing all those people? That's what you mean, don't you? Quote, Israel will not agree to Hamas's demands, which would mean surrender. It will continue fighting until all of its objectives are achieved. And now, from the Times of Israel, CIA chief to meet Qatari PM in Doha as hostage talks said to be, quote, near collapse. This is from Euronews. Northern Gaza in full-blown famine, senior UN official. In famine, in front of everybody's eyes. Let them die. Let them die. We got to get Hamas. UN. Scale of destruction in Gaza not seen since World War II will take 16 years to rebuild. Oh, you mean when Jared Kushner and, then, and the gang rebuild it? When they get all those Palestinians out? Genocide by the definition. 72% of all residential buildings in Gaza have been partially or completely destroyed, the United Nations said. And the destruction surpasses $30 billion, possibly $40 billion. Oh, $40 billion, that's nothing. The United States just sent $60 billion to Ukraine to keep blooding the killing fields. Oh, and $26 billion to Israel to keep slaughtering the Palestinians. It's the American way. What's your favorite war? I, you know, I love the Vietnam War. I grew up during that time. Oh, the Iraq War, the first one. I like the second one a lot, a lot better. Oh, the Afghan War, how can I forget that? How can I forget Nobel Peace of Crap Prize when there were Obama's wars? I want that guy Assad out of there, out of Libya, and destroying the richest country in Africa, where people have more rights and benefits than most of the world. What's your favorite war? And no, I like the Yemen War. Oh, our Secretary of Defense Blinken went over there to help the Saudis Fight the Houthis? Yeah. And it keeps going. And then you're not allowed to talk about peace and you're not allowed to demonstrate about peace. This is from the World Socialist website. Biden backs police repression against nonviolent anti-genocide protests. This is this past Thursday. U.S. President Joe Biden gave his speech from the Oval Office backing the violent suppression of protests against U.S.-Israeli genocide in Gaza by police forces throughout the country. Order must prevail, Biden said. 
They go on to say, without citing a single example, Biden asserted that the mass nationwide peaceful protests by millions of people were violent and anti-Semitic. Let's get this straight, everybody. I'm tired of hearing the word anti-Semitic. The people running Israel are not Semites. Look up the definition of a Semite. People from the Mesopotamia region, the Palestinians are Semites. The people running Israel are Ashkenazi Jews. Yeah, N-A-Z-I at the end of it. They're from the Khazar region, Kazakhstan. Northeast of uh, Turkey. They're not Semites. And if you condemn the murder of Palestinians in front of everybody's eyes, brought to you with the help of the United States, you're an anti-Semite, and you have no freedom of speech. Biden was speaking only hours after a huge force of police, including California state troopers, dispatched by Democratic Governor Gavin Newsom, swooped down on the UCL campus and arrested or dispersed the protesters who were camped there. On Tuesday night, a group of Zionist thugs armed with clubs and firecrackers assaulted the encampment when most of the protesters were asleep while the police stood by and gave them free reign for three hours. Oh, oh! Israelis can protest. People that are pro-Israel, they can protest. But you are against the Israel war. You have no right to protest. Right here where I live, in Kingston, New York, 20 minutes away from here, New Paul's, a SUNY college, they locked up hundreds of these kids, peacefully protesting. Oh, the encampments. Oh, one after another, they're locking them up. Get rid of these encampments. You have no right to encamp and protest. Hey, how about all the migrants that are out there camping out? How about all the homeless camping out? Oh, that's okay. But you're not allowed to camp out and protest for peace. That's the American way. The America that destroys countries all over the world in the name of bringing freedom democracy when it's robbed right in front of your eyes. Yep. New York City carried out a similar attack. Nearly 300 students were arrested. And, uh, oh, and Jill Stein, oh, she's Jewish. Green Party. Arrested. For protesting. A lot of these people that are protesting are Jewish. Jewish voice for peace. Every one of my Jewish friends except one is totally opposed to what's going on here. Everyone. Netanyahu calls for crackdown on pro-Palestinian protesters. I read, talked about this. This was April 24th. What's happening in America college campuses is horrific. Anti-Semitic mobs have taken over our leading universities. A total lie, you murderer. You're a lying, lying murderer. Anti-Semitic mobs have not taken over our universities. Why isn't anybody condemning this? Oh, because they're cowards. They're political cowards that get paid off to speak the line of APAC. Now, unfortunately, state, local, federal officials, yep, have, many have responded differently, but there has to be more. More has to be done! To stop this, Netanyahu said last week, he said that the U.S. protests are akin to 1930s Nazis. This is reminiscent of what happened in German universities in the 1930s. It is unconscionable. It's unconscionable that you're killing all these people. Oh, protesters are unconscionable. Murder is fine. It's the American-Israeli way. Oh, he said that huh, what happened, it has to be considered, condemned and considered unequivocally. He, he said that it's shameful and that uh, Netanyahu is saying that 
an exponential rise of anti-Semitism throughout the United, through America and throughout the Western societies. Yep. And he's saying that they're saying death to the Jews. What they do is they get one or two or three people saying something out of 10,000, and those are the ones they quote. They're called, what are they called? Agents provocateurs. That's right. And again, a lot of these people are Jewish that are protesting. And then this is from, Biden says that uh, on the 24th of April, Netanyahu comes out and says that these campus protests can't go on. And then the United States follows exactly. It's like Biden shining Netanyahu's shoes. Biden launches police state crackdown at U.S. universities, World Socialist website, April 24th. Yep. Right after Netanyahu spoke, out came Biden. Yep. Yes, by a reporter, Biden said, yes, by a reporter, what's your message to the protesters at college campuses? Biden said, I condemn, I condemn the anti-Semitism protests. You are not allowed to protest against Israel's genocide. That I, the president, support and send billions of dollars to slaughter people. Back to the World Socialist website, April 27th. Biden's campus crackdown. The Democratic Party bears its fangs again. Yep. And they talk about all the people that are, you see the videos, college professor, women, 63 years old, being thrown down on the ground. Peaceful protesters. The ones that aren't peaceful are the Zionists that are attacking them. But that's okay. That's okay. They have the right to defend themselves. Again, World Socialist website. As Biden backs police assault on anti-genocide protests, Netanyahu prepares Rafa bloodbath. Over the past week, police forces throughout the United States, working in coordination with the Biden administration, have beaten and arrested several hundred students and faculty on university campuses for opposing the deliberate and systematic genocide of the Palestinian people. Again, look at the pictures of the destruction of Gaza in front of everybody's eyes. Asked, have the protests forced you to reconsider any of the policies with regard to the region? Biden said, no, no, I will keep the murder going. I loved every war in my life. I'm the guy that was a draft dodger, five draft deferments during the Vietnam War. But I love every war and I love killing people. Yep, my track record proves it. Look at it. I'm Joe Biden. Yep. There's an article in the LA Times, and it's person Ali, mocking Gaza protesters as gluten free warriors was run until the mob at UCLA attacked them. Demonstrators in a pro Palestinian camp in a UCA face off. Oh, that's it. Bill Maher on his HBO talk show this week said that pro-Palestinian student protesters in college campuses are what happens when, quote, activism merges with narcissism. Narcissism. Isn't that stupid? And it goes on one after another. The Atlantic columnist David Frum referred to the, 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 Palace, the, the people that are protesting at UCLA uh, that were attacked by a mob on Wednesday of counter-protesters as Banana allergy revolutionaries. Isn't that nice? How they're demeaning all these young kids? Locking them up for nothing other than protesting for peace? Oh, oh, by the way, SUNY, these are, these are public universities. This is public space. This isn't a private university. And they're locking them up for what? Encampments, saying they want peace. And this is, this is this arrogant little Bill Mayer. The guy that always looks like this. I'm a comic. I'm a comic. You listen to me. I'm a comic. This is the little coward that came out against 9-11 
when after everything else happened, and then he backtracked because he's a gutless little boy. He goes on to say that, um, yes, I'm sure there are injustice on both sides of the Middle East, uh, but I'm going to be late for work, so I can't talk about it. And uh, <laughs> I'm not saying there aren't sincere passions about Gaza, especially among people from the region. But social justice warriors, for a lot of them, it seems like it's more about warrioring than about whatever the cause is. This is the ignorance. These are the people. These are the people that the media covers and that gives us the garbage of war. Yep. And we can keep going on here. Yep. Here's, here's an article from the New York Times. Gaza protests on campus are new fodder for GOP. You ready for this? Republicans uh, from uh, pouncing on Mr. Biden's comments, they accuse the president of being unwilling to take stronger actions to quell the protests. Quote, President Biden still wasn't forcibly condemned. St Excuse me. President Biden still won't forcibly condemn the Hamas mobs on campus. Senator Tom Cotton, a little cotton ball of nothing. Hey, I was a fighter. I was in the army. I like killing people. They're not Hamas. They are not Hamas supporters. They are supporters of peace, you little murderous, little lying boy. A cotton mouth. This is disgusting. I am angry because they are ramping up World War III. They are slaughtering people in front of everybody's eyes. And when you protest, you're condemned, you're arrested, you're put in jail, you're thrown to the ground. This is not my America. And I fight for freedom, peace, and justice. And I will continue to fight for freedom, peace, and justice to the day I die or to the day they may kill me. And I get the hate mail and the, and the death threats. Cotton, a Republican, said to the statement, and yep, that um, on Thursday, that cast the protesters as supporting a group of terrorist organizations. Could you imagine this? And this is the media, and this is what they're selling. And then again, it keeps going on. Macron over in France reaffirms that sending NATO troops to fight Russia and Ukraine shouldn't be rolled out, ruled out. A NATO member says Macron, Macron's Ukraine idea could start World War III. World War III has already begun. German defense minister signs decree for war against Russia. This is from the World Socialist website. With this decree, we are further aligning the top level structure of the leadership organization of the Federal Ministry of Defense. And they keep going on and on. This is Germany. You like the first world war from Germany? Now, nah, maybe you like the second German world war. British foreign minister gives go ahead for Ukrainian strikes on Russia with UK supplied missiles. All right. Keep going on and on and on. You get more in your trends journal, of course. So do what you can to bring peace on earth because it's hell on earth in front of everybody's eyes, and it will only get worse. From the COVID war, to the Ukraine war, to world war. Here we are. Thank you for tuning in, and please do what you can to donate. We've got to get a major peace movement going. If we don't, we're finished. How about a billionaire giving a billion dollars for peace? Then we'd have it. Thank you. Amen and a women.